are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. And we will make America great again. Well, friends, you heard the voice of President Trump there. And there are many events now in these days that he is speaking at. I hope you're following all of them on Right Side Broadcasting Network or on our uh, PresidentTrumpRallies.com page. It's so, so helpful for us. Uh, even I am uh, even urge those who do not uh, favor President Trump uh, necessarily in the primaries, but listening to his message strengthens all of us. It really does in the vision of what we need America to be. We're all united, no matter what primary candidate we're behind, uh, in the fact that the country is going to hell, like he says, and we have got to rescue it. We absolutely have a battle here between freedom and tyranny. And I think in the 2024 race, that is more clear than ever. And tonight we're going to talk about how the Democrats are dressing up this 2024 Biden campaign. Uh, Jesse Waters did a great job the other day laying it out. And I want to just share with you, in case you missed it, what he said about this and add some comments of my own. And those comments really also draw from the scripture passage I want to read from St. Paul. Because he talks to the Corinthians about sincerity, and this is something that these Democrat campaigns utterly lack. Uh, there's no sincerity there at all. In fact, there's the opposite of it. There's lying manipulation going on. But we'll talk about that here. First Corinthians, let's go to the Word of God. Chapter 5, starting with verse number 6. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but rather with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let us pray. Lord, your people of old cleansed out the leaven as they prepared to celebrate the Passover meal. The old leaven representing sin and corruption. The new leaven, the unleavened bread, representing sincerity and truth. Representing Christ, representing your Son, Lord God. Let us feast on the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Lord, some say that the biggest virtue we need in politics is civility. It is not. The virtue we need is sincerity. The virtue we need is truth-telling. The virtue we need is courage to properly name, identify, and fight the threats that are lined up against our nation. This is the value. This is the characteristic. This is the virtue we need in our politics today. We thank you for leaders like President Trump who know how to speak with sincerity, who know how to name the evils we face in a way that resonates with exactly the way we think about them and speak about them ourselves, and know how to fight these evils with resolve and with effectiveness. Let us feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Lord God, by our sincerity, may we expose the manipulation the political parties that lie, candidates that manipulate, governments and government agencies that are weaponized. Free us, Lord God, from insincerity. Free us from lies. Set America on a new course, which is actually a very old one, the one we started with rooted in principles that apply at, in every age, God-given rights, the equality of every human being, the consent of the governed, government by the people. Bless us, Lord, as we ponder anew tonight 
what we need to do to save America. Give us the success to the work of our hands. We pray through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You know, I really do think the biggest virtue we need in politics is this sincere, courageous truth-telling. That's what we need above all. Sincere, courageous truth-telling. And that's what President Trump does. That's why I support him. That's why many of you do, too. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't fool around. You know exactly where you stand, whether you like it or not. You know where he stands. You know what he says is what he means, is what he's going to do, and he does even more than what he promises to do. And in sin- and sincerity, from Latin, sine cera, you know what that means? Without wax, the wax masks that were put over people's faces to conceal their real identity is the essence of what insincerity is. Someone presents themselves as something that they aren't. We have to see the real person. So that's where President Trump's administration was the most sincere in history, the most transparent. What's one of the values of his tweets, and now on Truth Social, of course, one of the values of the president doing that is that you and I should know what our political leaders are thinking and feeling. We should be able to see them react to world events and national events the way that we do. Or if it's different than the way we do, we should should know about that and we should know about it pretty immediately. So easy for presidents to hide behind one after another wall of separation. Opaque, obscure uh, 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 disguises keeping us far, far away from what they really think and what they really feel. It's not that way with President Trump, is it? He's not afraid to engage the media. He's not afraid to talk. He's not afraid to be out there. He's not afraid to put up posts on on Truth Social. Sincere. This is what we need. The Democrats are exactly the opposite of that. I want to do two things here tonight. I want to show you this Jesse Waters clip because I think this really sums up what what they're trying to do with Biden, how they intend to to manage this. And then another dimension of it, of course, is the third-party candidates. We talked a little bit about this the other day. But, you know, 2024 could end up being the the year of the third party. Not that I think, and I I don't know that any serious political commentators think that a third party can actually run away with the nomination or even even come close but it can disrupt it can disrupt the political landscape enough to give it to one or another candidate so this year the is is in many ways going to be the year of the third party in the sense of people feeling the need to do it we'll get into that in just a moment but first okay so i came across this clip from from jesse and uh Ah, yeah, this is really what's going on. Let's take a look and we'll comment on it. Democratic Party's made up its mind. It's Operation Bubble Wrap Joe, or it's Gavin. If Biden wants sunlight from now until Election Day, he's going to have to get it from a private beach in Rehoboth because the president's not allowed to go near the campaign trail. The White House is quarantining the president, so the media is going to have to win this for Joe. But they can't push the Biden record because... There is no Biden record. So here's how the media is going to run the Biden re-election campaign. Watch. If you want to be fair, then you will frame this uh, as uh, Joe Biden being the candidate that supports American democracy and Donald Trump, a candidate who supports a new form of government here that's authoritarian. He will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. Uh, Just look at his past. It's not really hard to read. That's it. That's the strategy. Bubble wrap the president and Trump's Hitler, so prepare for mass executions. Seems kind of over the top, a little bit. Why do they think Trump's going to put everyone to death since he never committed genocide during his first term? Well, the New York Times says, quote, Trump's dire words 
raise new fears about his authoritarian bent. Oh, Trump's words. It's the words again. Because last time I checked, Trump chanted lock her up and never did. It's actually Biden who's trying to lock up Trump. It's actually Biden who's prosecuting Elon. It's Biden's America where good guys like Daniel Penny get arrested and the bad hombres get bailed out. Trump said the word vermin and the media thinks he's going to start putting people to death. But there's so much actual vermin here in New York, the mayor had to appoint a rat commissioner. Again, watch what they do, not what they say, because we can talk about words all day. Here's a House Democrat threatening to eliminate Trump. It is just uh, uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. <laughs> eliminate him so he can't execute us. Biden 2024. So unifying. And isn't it funny how one party's in the streets yelling gas the Jews while claiming the other party's Hitler? That's what psychiatrists call projection. Yeah, they're great at projection. Listen, anything these leftist lunatics and the people you heard there speaking from the left, lunatics, brothers and sisters, is not, they're not just wrong. They're not just very wrong. They're sick. They're demented. They're lunatics. Trump derangement syndrome is, is what's going on here, and it includes, one of the symptoms of it is projection. They lie. See, again, that's why I chose this passage from 1 Corinthians. Let us feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. They do exactly the opposite. Nobody's ever done it better than the modern-day American Democrat Party. They never, Nobody's ever done it better. I include all communist regimes, all of the Marxist regimes of all history. Nobody's ever done better the art of inverting the truth so that exactly everything they say is the opposite of what is true. Exactly everything that they accuse the other side of doing. Their political and ideological opposites Everything they accuse them of thinking, wanting to do, and actually doing, every threat that they propose, these people pose to America, is exactly what they are. And what they're thinking, and what they want to do, exactly what they are. This is, I don't even want to use the word unbelievable, because it has become very believable. This has become the pattern. And what Jesse said about the way they want to conduct this campaign, it's only going to get worse. The rhetoric is going to become far more extreme because they don't have anything else, like he said at the outset of that, of that commentary. There's no record that these people can point to. This is why they've done all these charges and these indictments, which, of course, have, be have become... Uh, Dan Bongino said just today that the biggest political backfire in, in American history in the way that they have boosted President Trump will continue to bring on more indictments and more charges. How come, have, how come there haven't been more coming out lately? And certainly they have more things that they can invent. Certainly they have more laws that they can dust off from the 1800s and, and apply in ways that they've never been applied before or never been intended to apply. Sure, certainly, come on. Democrats haven't run out of creativity, have they? Get a few more, dust off a few more old laws that, that use them in ways, stretch them in ways beyond recognition and pile on a few more charges and indictments, why don't you? There's a reason why they haven't, they haven't continued. They know this is backfiring. They have no record to run on, and that's why they've got to distract from the non-record. That's actually, it's a record of failure and destruction. And they have no reason to think that Biden can even carry out a second term, much less even run for one. And yet they're kind of stuck with them. No, they're stuck. So now I think what's going to happen, I've expressed this opinion before. Really, my opinion is that, that there is a political 
deadlock of two different opinions among the, the Democrat Party. Yes, we got to get rid of Biden. Somehow they don't know, know quite how. Or no, we've got to hold on to him. We can't. We can't. Uh, uh, it, it won't work to try to replace him with somebody. Okay. So I think that there is a there is a strong political um, logger people at loggerheads on this in the Democrat Party. But I think that both sides are going to be spared even the need to um, win the, 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 the prevail in their opinion, because I think human nature is going to decide this. Just the continued deterioration of Biden physically and mentally, I think that's what's going to decide. Not the will or the choice of anybody, including him, but simply the, 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 the progression of, of, of human nature is going to decide that there's going to come a point between now and Election Day 2024 when it's obvious to everybody and to him that he can't do it. It's not going to be a choice. It's going to be the reality of nature. Because at a certain point, you know, you're not able, you're not able to. I mean, he's already practically there at the point where he can't talk. But there comes a point where you really can, and nobody's going to be able to. Nobody's going to be able to make up any excuses any longer. But we'll see how all that all that pans out. That's my opinion of what's going to go on here. But in the meantime, what Jesse Waters said just there is exactly what's going on. To amp up the ridiculous rhetoric against President Trump, to bring Trump derangement syndrome to new heights. And we're going to talk more about this in a later program. I want to analyze some of the other things that people have said and are saying and show why it's exactly the opposite of the reality. And I just refer you to President Trump's inaugural address and then look at all his accomplishments in the light of what he said in that inaugural address. That, remember what he said, that this is not about the transfer today in Washington of power from one party to another. It's about the transfer of power from Washington to you, the American people. Take that idea. Take him at his word. Just test it. Even some of you who might be watching that don't agree with this. Take him at his word just for the sake of argument. And then test that idea against the kinds of policies he's actually implemented. Do they bring more power to the American people? Well, first of all, a thriving economy, lifting more people out of poverty, putting more people to work, taking away more government regulations and taxes than any other president has done, and enabling a very diverse economy to thrive in the form of small businesses, does that or does that not give more power to the people? Family wages go up. Is that more power to the people or is that more power to the government? School choice. Enabling parents, advocating for the right of parents to educate their children in the way they see fit advocating for people's rights to speak what they think and not be censored on college campuses saying that they're not going to get federal funding if they don't let their students speak their mind or listen to the speaker of their choice come into campus without leftists shutting them down or shutting them up or driving them away. Does that give power to those students? Or does it take it away? Religious liberty. President Trump saved our ministry from facing crippling fines because we wouldn't agree to put abortion in our health care uh, plans for our employees, allowing people to actually make contracts with the government and get government grants and do projects and programs funded by the government without having to hide or disguise the faith that is the very motivation behind the things that they are doing, is that giving power to the people? Or is it taking it away from them and concentrating it in the hands of a dictator? And you can go on and on. Go to every... Listen, do this as an exercise. Go to ProLifePresident.com. It's not only about his pro-life accomplishments. He has all his accomplishments there in a summary fashion. 
and test each and every one of them against the question, who benefits in terms of power from this policy? Is it the people? Or is it some autocratic dictator that they claim he is? These leftist lunatics are so arrogant in thinking that they can fool us on something that is so contrary to the facts. It's not that they don't know that they're lying. It's not that they don't know the facts. Now, some are stupid, but it's not that they're all stupid. Some of them are very smart, and they know, and they are informed. But they, they, they don't care about you or me, and they don't want us to have the power as Americans the power to raise our children the way we see fit, practice our faith the way we see fit, grow our businesses without an oppressive government on our backs, not to mention all the international stuff. When we enter into trade agreements that are actually favorable to America rather than unfavorable, like this ridiculous Paris Climate Accord, or the destructive and dangerous Iran nuclear deal, or any of the things that President Trump got us out of. Many of these things Biden put us right back into. Just ask the, analyze it from the point of view of where, where, is, where, is, where does the power end up? In the hands of Americans or in the hands of our enemies? In the hands of the people or in the hands of the government? And then compare that to the rhetoric of the leftist lunatics who are trying to say not only that President Trump wants to be an autocrat or a dictator, despite the fact that he constantly says in all his rallies, we worship God, not government. But then they go so far as to say the ridiculous things you just heard on that clip. Oh, he's going to kill people. He's going to, he's going to imprison and kill people. And by the way, the issue I deal with full-time, the abortion issue, what more crystallizes a policy that gives power to the people rather than to the government, than to say a person has the right to live. A person has the right to be born. And the right to live and your rights as a human being and your personhood begins when your life begins, not one moment later. Not the day of your birth. The day of your conception. That's when you start. When was it decided? If you have blue eyes, when was it, when did your eye, when, when, when was it decided that your eyes would be blue? When was it decided that your eyes would be brown? Well, what the, when, was that, when was that determined? We know the answer to that question scientifically. It was determined at your conception. Genetic material from mom and dad combined, and it was decided on that cellular level what these genetic characteristics would be. Wasn't didn't happen, didn't happen 20 months in to your journey in the womb. It didn't happen on the day of your birth. It didn't happen when you were five years old. Scientifically, when did it happen? When was it decided? At your conception. All right. Third parties. This is very much going to be the election of third party candidates. I'm not saying that any of them are going to get the nomination. What I'm saying is, there's more of an appetite for this now. We see people jumping in already. You see what happened with RFK Jr. He, he decided, I'm not going to run as a Democrat because Democrats weren't interested in having him because they know he'll undercut Biden. I'm going to run as an independent. Then you've got this, um, well, Cornell West, okay, he's going to take votes from the left. Then you've got this Jill Stein that many Democrats are angry at for having uh, lost uh, the 2016 election, as they see it. Well, again, running as a Green Party uh, uh, candidate. And then you've got um, a couple of other things going on. You've got this uh, fellow uh, dean in uh, Minnesota who's challenging Biden uh, and saying, hey, listen, he's just too old, kind of what I was saying before, Dean Phillips I'm talking about, um, that, hey, let's say the quiet part out loud, Biden, we can't, he, he can't do it. And then what about Manchin? So I've got a lot of um, 
information in an article here about Manchin, looking seriously here at doing a, a, an independent run for the White House. And uh, this would be with the No Labels group. I think this is ridiculous, uh, by the way. But this No Labels group um, looking for uh, some kind of a possible bipartisan uh, ticket, already getting in access in a dozen states to uh, the ballot. Um, if it got just one or more states, it could result in a scenario where none of the candidates gets the majority of electoral votes or the number of electoral votes, I should say, needed to win the White House, which is the magic number of 270. That could happen. And in that case, you know, constitutionally, the presidential election gets decided by the House of Representatives. Um, could this election be going in that direction? It sure could. It sure could because a, 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 a mansion ticket with Romney on it, which is one of the things that's being floated, though I don't know that I don't think he's uh, going to be doing it, could put states like Utah and Nevada into play. All right. Interesting facts, by the way, in some of these articles about all of this. There is a sentiment out there among a lot of voters that they're tired of a, a they, they, there's a certain fatigue of having a Trump Biden rematch. But the good thing to keep in mind about all this, the Trump base is rock solid. We're not going anywhere. We're not changing for anything. The Trump base is rock solid. The Bi you can't say the same about the Biden base. You just can't. It's ambivalent. It's sort of like, well, I guess, you know, if he's going to be the nominee, of course, we're going to we're going to vote for him. But my goodness, it'd be better to have somebody. It's, it's, it's fractured. It's a lot of dissatisfaction with him. A lot of people saying, oh, sure, sure, I'll vote for him if he's on the ticket, but I wish it were somebody else. The Biden coalition is weak compared to the Trump base, which means that the more third party candidates that get in, the more it helps President Trump, because his base isn't going to, going to go to them in any substantial number. Whereas the Biden base, well, they're, they're ready to find an alternative. All right. Interesting history, too. The only person to win, who was the only person in the presidential election to win the nomination, to win the presidency, I should say, without a party affiliation? You know what the answer to that question is? The first one, George Washington. And when was the last time that a president from a new party won election to the presidency? The one who started the Republican Party, Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president. All right. I shared with you the other day the, um, by the way, ProLifeVote.com. I hope you're signed up for our our trainings, our election trainings, how you can make a difference locally. We update you on all kinds of things. Uh, we have these meetings monthly by Zoom, and then we'll intensify the frequency of them as we get closer to the election. ProLifeVote.com. Again, we don't only talk about the pro-life issue, but all the ways that you can help influence the election. All right. I sh One final thing I shared with you the other day by video, the uh, President uh, Trump's uh, Thanksgiving message. And that was the serious one that, that, not that this one isn't serious, but this one's more sarcastic, but the serious message uh, was great, great message about, about uh, our reasons to give thanks and his gratitude to so many people in America. But let me read for you the more feisty one. Okay. Because we, again, sincerity, I was saying about earlier. Sincerity is not the same thing as uh, everything is roses and flowers. Sincerity means you show forth what you really think and how you really feel. Here we go. Happy Thanksgiving to all, all in all caps, including the racist and incompetent Attorney General of New York State, Letitia Peekaboo James, who has let murder and violent crime flourish and businesses flee. The radical left Trump-hating judge, a psycho, Arthur Engoron, who criminally defrauded the state of New York and me 
by purposely valuing my assets at a tiny fraction of what they are really worth in order to convict me of fraud before even a trial or seeing any proof and use his politically biased and corrupt campaign finance violator, Chief Clerk Allison Greenfield, to sit by his side on the bench and tell him what to do. And crooked Joe Biden who has weaponized his Department of Injustice against his political opponent and allowed our country to go to hell. And all the other radical left lunatics, communists, fascists, Marxists, Democrats, and rhinos who are seriously looking to destroy our country, all caps. Have no fear, however. We will win the presidential election of 2024 and make America great again, also in all caps. Now look. I'm of the mind that this is what we need in politics, the sincerity of it. Are we not supposed to get angry at anything anymore? Where did that that come from? Scripture says, be angry, but do not sin. You can be angry and not sin. Jesus was angry and never sinned. Are we not supposed to get angry anymore? I don't know where that comes from. But there seems to be quite a a sentiment in many parts of our electorate that, oh, no, 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 this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is not wrong. You say what you feel, what you mean, what you judge to be right, to be wrong, and you point it out to people, and you have to stir people up, especially if you claim to be a leader. Let's turn to prayer. Father, presidency, many of them, we've been, hundreds of them actually, we don't even know their names by memory. <clears throat> and then we have those who are more well known, but Lord, we just ask your hand upon this presidential race. That America be brought to the point of being saved. And we know that although politicians can be very sincere, like President Trump, and can do a lot to save our nation. That is not the same as believing that there are political saviors, because there aren't. We have, as President Trump also acknowledges, one savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we put our nation again under the, under the blood, under the cross, under the spirit of Jesus Christ. We submit the Supreme Court of the United States to the Supreme Court of Jesus Christ. We put all judges under the lordship of the judge of the world, Jesus Christ. And we put all executives and legislators under the mantle of the supreme lawgiver, Jesus Christ. Sincerity. Give us the grace, Lord, to say what we think. Give us the grace, first of all, to think clearly about what we believe. Then to express what we think. And to act on what we say. And to associate with others who believe the same way. And speak the same truth. And work for the same goals. Bless our nation, Lord. And make America great again. We pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, good to be with you, friends. We'll have a lot more to say tomorrow night. Spread the word about Praying for America, and we will talk to you soon. Hello, this is Father David Begany. Like many priests, I am inspired and always learning from the Ministry of Priests for Life, which is one of the largest and most visible pro-life organizations in the world. This ministry relies on your financial support to be able to do its work, produce its programs, and travel the world to advocate for the unborn. May I ask you to support Priests for Life generously? Go today to prolifegift.org and give as generous a gift as you can. 
Thank you so much and be assured of our daily prayers for you. Priests for Life, saving lives for over 30 years.